each teacher should look at themselves as a business. And so the lives that I touch, the product provider, not to make it impersonal, I want my products to represent the things that I represent, which is to be disciplined, to be prepared, and to be diverse enough so that they can adjust out in the outside world. We're investing in young lives. These people are gonna grow up one day. They're gonna run the world, you know. They're living in our communities. They're gonna be my peers one day. We invest our time and our talents and our energies to try to create in this kid something for the future. Why not be directly involved and in, in invest in who's gonna take care of you? My grandfather used to tell me, it's hard to be great every day, but it's easy to work hard every day. And that's how he lived his life, and I was able to see that, and that's how I patterned my life. Teamwork. What's three times X? My first career choice was accounting. Actually, I have a bachelor's in accounting. Went to, took the classes and got a degree, made mom real proud. Now, when people talk about that your job is pretty much what you do and who you are, and accounting just wasn't who I was. When people say Detroit public schools are bad, are you think they're just saying the building is bad or the building and the people inside of it? You gotta put yourself out there. I want them to understand that you are the biggest investment in this particular piece. So when you are ready to do something, that's when we'll fix things in Detroit. Or that's when things will happen, not when somebody from the outside says, we're gonna fix you, you have to fix yourself. The first thing I do, is I let my kids know that I'm human. And I share some of my background with them. And it's not all positive. I share some of the decisions that I made and the consequences of those decisions. And I let them know I'm human. In mathematics or in I'm teaching social skills, I make mistakes and they point them out and I just own up to them. Some people, that is true. That is a sweet mistake. Some people, and that builds that bond of trust because they come look at you like, who is this guy? What do you think he is? Anybody has something different than that? In business, if I'm in a particular business and I order some supplies for you, my input goods, and they're not up to par, I can make a phone call and say, hey, I don't want them. You need to send me higher quality of goods, raw materials. But when a student comes in this door, we don't send them back. Whatever that raw material, we bring it in and we work with them. So that's where the business part of it ends when we start talking about the people and the interpersonal things that they bring to the table. Tilt, tilt, tilt it up. Well, oftentimes my students tell me they don't believe that I went to school in Detroit or that I'm from the same neighborhood and face some of the same challenges that they face. So we have to get in the car sometimes and I bring them here where I went to school, Southeastern High School on 3030 Fairview. Walking through the neighborhood, going to school every day, trying to do the right thing. But there are some challenges to that. Neighborhood sometimes not a safe place. There are some people in the neighborhood who may not want you to succeed. And there are some temptations. I stayed about two miles from here, and between those two miles, there was probably five different gang sets. So we have to, you either could choose to walk some days, or you caught the bus some days, or we did what we did when we were coming out of school. You walked until the bus came but you have to overcome those things. I bring that into the classroom with such a passion to show them that I did it. And once they visit my school and, and go inside and see my old coaches and some old photos and some things like that, they, they can start to relate to me. And I, and I just tell them, I say, hey, I'm gonna give you some tools that you can help overcome those challenges. But let me help you. You did a good job. We have to discover what's really going on with them. And it's our job to pull that out of them, make sure that they have some hope and they believe in themselves when they go out into the world. You gotta switch it. And that's probably the hardest thing to sell to a student is to have faith because that's something that's far off. When every day if I'm walking down the street and all I see are empty lots or people begging or despair, it's hard for me as a young person to believe that if I do something 10 years from now, something's gonna happen. And but that's what I have to sell them. While the man is on the corner selling dope, I got to sell hope. We tired of winning. Woo! Here at Evergreen, we had 200 students, we'll say. 
And the students that I've worked with this year will say 175 of them told me that they want to go to college, but had no real concrete idea of what college is about. So what I did, I said, we'll go to college campuses. So we visited Wayne State University, University of Michigan, Western Michigan, Oakland University. I got them on campus so that it could be something that they could reach out that's tangible for them, that's something that they could touch. So they say, I'm on this campus. I see a student that looks like me, or I see someone who has a similar background or similar experiences. So I think it's, it's, it's important just to take what I know and what has happened with me or to me in the world and bring it into the classroom, just give them opportunity to experience it from my eyes and their eyes as well. You working in something? Yeah, I'm trying to be a police cadet. I want them to know that they love. That's one of the things I want them to know, that they are, at, for Mr. Miller, you were loved, and he genuinely cares about your success. But I've seen you improve, though. From the first one I met you, you had an attitude all the time. You got you, you, you improved. Talking to the social worker, they've been helping me. Who's your social worker? Oh, I'm talking about here? Mm -hmm. He's been helping me. You be mad? Are you a doctor? I didn't know that. I want you to know that while you're with me, that I genuinely care about you. And now, as far as the academics, I'm going to push you with rigor and high expectations so that you'll be prepared so that when you go in front of any teacher at any level, college, or go right off into your trade or what have you that you'll be prepared for that. But first and foremost, I want them to know that they're loved. I met my daddy uh, Sunday. You just met your father for the first time? Sunday. Wow. Uh, so I always want to in my life. Oh, no, so. My mama had took them there, but my grandma said the color street. So she didn't want the dark street. Look, I, 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 when I was your age, I just use those little journals that you know we, that they give us, like school. I, right now, I probably got about over 100 and some journals. Just when I wrote stuff, poetry, how I was feeling. Let's get you a book. I'm gonna bring you a book. It's gonna have all blank pages on it. You just write down the stuff that you wanna write down. And I was already proud of you. Now I'm like, I'm over here like, wow. To be honest with you, you had something in your life that people would take as a negative, use it as a positive. Because one day you're going to be a, a wife and a mother yourself. I've seen it. I have students that are in colleges all, all across this country that come back or call me and say, Mr. Miller, I remember you told me this in 1998. Or Mr. Miller, remember when you this? Or Mr. Miller, this is my wife and my children. Or Mr. Miller, these are some of the things that I'm doing. So without a doubt. I mean, it's my city. I got to invest in it. Great Teachers is brought to you by the United Way for Southeastern Michigan with support from the Ford Foundation. More information is available at www.liveunitedsem.org.